Hey there, everybody. Welcome. To, this is Kelly Pilato of the Grit, Guts, and Courage show. And in this show, this is where we talk to people who have had to overcome something and it took grit, guts, and courage. And today, my guest is Alan Simberg. And I just love Alan. He's been a friend, he's a client. And, uh, you know, I just can't wait to hear what he has to share with us today. So, welcome, Alan. Oh, thank you, Kelly. I appreciate you having me on your show. Oh, you bet. Okay, Alan, we're just going to jump right into it. What's your story of grit, guts, and courage? Well, I hope I don't get too many shivers in my body when I tell you about this story, because it was a really, really difficult time for me in my life. Um, it was during the time that I was clinical supervisor in an outpatient drug and alcohol clinic, mm -hmm. and I was in the process of going through the schoolwork and my dissertation for my PhD. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have very much downtime, very much recreational time. But this one evening, I decided to go and play tennis. And I was having a great time. And then at one point, when I went to run after one of the tennis balls, the next thing I knew, I was flat on my face on the tennis court. I don't know if I lost consciousness or not. I may have briefly lost consciousness. And when I first was able to become aware of like where I was being on the, the tennis court floor, um, I thought, oh, geez, that's funny. I must have tripped. But I felt very disoriented. And then when I started to get up, I noticed a pain in my lower, actually it was my ankle area. I was going to say lower leg, but my ankle area. And I thought, gee, that's kind of interesting. You know, oh, I wonder if I have a cramp. And I got up and there was something very, very different about that. And I knew that I couldn't continue playing tennis at that point. Some people helped me to the sitting area in the tennis club. Okay. And they told me that most likely I ruptured my Achilles tendon. Oh, no. So this is while obviously I have a full-time job. And at this point, I was in the process of, of completing my, my doctoral dissertation. I was having a lot of trouble getting the doctoral dissertation done because the people that were on the doctoral committee, every so often, one of them would quit. And when somebody quits, you have to find somebody else. So when I ruptured my Achilles tendon, I recognized, you know, this is going to be really, really rough. Not only am I having to find other people to be on my doctoral committee, but how am I going to do my dissertation? Like, I don't even know what a ruptured Achilles tendon even means. <laughs> so luckily, it was my left foot and I had automatic transmission. I drove myself to the hospital. I went into the emergency room and they diagnosed that it was a ruptured Achilles tendon. And not surprisingly, they recommended that I get in touch with a, with an orthopedic doctor. <laughs> 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 so, so I drove myself home, yeah. and I had no idea what to expect. But one of the things they told me in the emergency room was one of the ways to manage the pain would be to elevate my foot. You know, whenever possible, elevate my foot. What I didn't know is that once I elevated my foot and then I was going to bring it down because I needed to go somewhere, when the blood flowed back into that area, the pain was absolutely excruciating. Oh, my God. And I still didn't quite know what to expect. Right. So luckily, my sister lived close by, and her husband 
took me to the doctor's. He, he, they helped me to find the doctor and took me to the doctor's appointment. I'll tell you, this is some story. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, they, that I, I, so I went to the appointment and the doctor scheduled surgery. And I went for the pre-surgery interview. Right. It's not exactly an interview, it's an evaluation. Yeah, I wasn't going to get a job. <laughs> 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 and I let them know that I was allergic to latex. Okay, yeah. And one of the things that they had told me was my re rehab time would probably be about six weeks. Okay. The night before I was scheduled for the surgery, the doctor called me and let me know that surgery was canceled because they weren't able to incubate me with something that didn't have latex in it. And they were concerned that I might have an allergic reaction and die. Oh, no. Yes. So I said, well, then now what? <laughs> yeah. So I said, well, you'll come to the office and we'll take care of you. I had no idea what that meant. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> now, unfortunately, and tell me when to stop, okay? <laughs> or if I'm giving you too much detail. Um, when I got to the office, what I learned from what the doctor was telling me is that he had a tendency to be kind of on the, the harsh reality side that wasn't necessarily something that was going to happen. Okay. Okay. So he had me kneel on the examining table and wiggle my foot. Oh. I, I, he wanted to see if it was partially, it was a partial tear or a complete rupture. Okay. Okay. I could not move my foot. He goes, oh, this is really serious. I'm going, oh my God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. He goes, but don't worry. He says, you know, obviously we can't do the surgery. He goes, just lay on your stomach. So I lay on my stomach. He doesn't tell me anything he's going to do. He grabs my leg. He pulls it up high up into the air and starts wrapping. I don't know it's everything that he did, but essentially what he did was he bent my foot backwards towards my ankle, towards the back of my leg, as far as it would go, and essentially put a cast on me. Okay. And then he said, you know, this is going to be eight to 12 weeks. And here are your crutches. And I'm thinking, what? Well, how do you use crutches? <laughs> and the apartment I was living in was a basement apartment with stairs. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come yeah. on, Alan. It can't yeah. get any worse. <laughs> I, well, actually, from this point forward, it does get better. Okay, good. <laughs> Luckily, dun -da -da, my sister came to my rescue. She recognized I was not going to be able to do very much, including right. driving and getting food. She invited me to live with her. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice. So she told me, pack up. Let me know when you're ready. We'll come and get you. So I live with my sister, but now I'm thinking, I can't drive. How am I going to get my dissertation done? I got to get this done. I absolutely have to get this done. Yeah. Luckily, it's really funny how sometimes in a certain sense, the universe just works in our favor. Yep. My brother-in-law was a pharmacist and his store was on the way to my school. Oh, good. So he was able to drive you to school. And to the library so that I could do my dissertation. Oh, wow. Woo. So I would bring food. Mm -hmm. He would drive me as close as he could to the library steps. Yeah. <laughs> I would get up with the crutches. And then one of the things that happened, I'll tell you, I, actually, this is one last part. <laughs> there, there I am, I'm typing away my, my dissertation. And I don't know that much about computers and power and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So one of the things I did not know 
And this is sort of give you a very clear idea of what obviously happened. I didn't know that it would be a good idea that every so often when I type, it would be a good idea to say, yeah, save it. Okay. Oh, Alan. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no. So this is really something. So there I am typing away. And then like, you know, I'm, I'm taking a few minute break yeah. and the power goes out in the library. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. And then it comes back on pretty quick, you know, maybe in about five minutes or so. And I go back to my dissertation. Where is it? Gone. Gone. All that type. It was quite a bit done. It was about 25 pages. <laughs> and and I'm not a speed typist. I know. Because yeah. I've done your book. So I yeah. know. What you're... <laughs> I, that's, they, why, they... that's why I'm laughing even more so. Because I know you don't like technology. So <laughs> no. No, they call it the Christopher Columbus method, search and discover the keys. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> one finger, one or two fingers at a time. Yep. So at that point, I knew there was no way I could retype it. But I found a student who retyped that part for me. Oh, my God, you are so lucky. Oh, yeah, really. So and I appreciate all the luck I have. <laughs> <laughs> so from that point forward, you know, other than little mishaps here and there, I'll give you an example. I mean, this stuff happens in comedies and in movies, but obviously the reason it happens is because it mirrors real life. One evening, I went out to dinner with my sister, her husband, and my nephew. Mm -hmm. I swear this is true. <laughs> Oh my God. I can't imagine what you're going to tell me, Alan. Yeah. I'm I'm I know. I, I, I'm sitting directly across from my nephew. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the heck he was doing, but he stomped on my foot that was in the cast. Oh, no. <laughs> it only happens in movies. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and, and he's like, oh, Uncle Alan, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I go, oh, oh, yeah, 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 it's okay. No problem. Yeah, it's okay. And, and then from that moment on, you know, I kept my feet as far away from him as possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, my God. You yes. need your own sitcom, Alan. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you a quick little anecdote after I get to this next point from what you just said. Um, so from that point forward, there were struggles, but everything was okay. And, you know, I progressed. I had a really big challenge. The other thing I didn't realize was that literally when the cast came off, I had to learn to walk again. Yeah. That was some ordeal. That was, <laughs> you know, because obviously I think it'll be obvious. I was really terrified to put any weight on that foot. Right. And of course I couldn't put, well, I, I could. So basically what they did <clears throat> when I went to the rehab center, they started me out in the swimming pool. Okay. And they had me walk in the swimming pool. And obviously that's because there's the, the water takes a lot of pressure or, you know, you're not really walking on land. Right. And then I graduated to land. <laughs> 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 and and that was that was difficult in the beginning you know that they had me like balancing on a board you know they had me doing different exercises that would strengthen the ankle right but th that was really kind of trying one of the things that, that i was lucky about was that for the most part my boss was understanding you know i went on on um, liability insurance right um, and then the doctor thought, it, the doctor agreed. I don't know whether he just did it because I said it, or he really thought it might be a good idea. He was going to give me like a second or third extension. Okay. And my boy, I called my boss. I said, you know, listen, I'm going to be out in just another few weeks and then I should be ready to come in. And she basically said, we can't wait for you anymore. Oh no. Yeah. She said, you know, you either got to come in or I'm going to have to replace you. So I called the doctor and I asked him, I said, 
do you think I can go back to work now? Or do you think it would be a problem for me if I did that? He said, you know, as long as you take care of yourself and you, know, you, you watch what you're doing, I, I think you could be okay. So, right. so I called my boss and I went to work on my on crutches for a while. Right. And, you know, and everything worked out. I eventually finished my dissertation. Good. And that was basically my struggle. Would you like to hear that little sitcom thing that you mentioned? Of course. Okay. The thing that's really funny about that is <laughs> I had, and this is not a struggle thing. <laughs> Um, I, I was a counselor in an inpatient treatment program. Right. And one of the clients was a publicity person out of Los Angeles. Okay. And he appreciated my sense of humor. Okay. He said, listen, you know, I don't know whether this is something you would consider, but he said, you know, when I get out of here, you know, I'm an agent. He said, how would you like it if I booked you in comedy clubs in Los Angeles? You, we could, we could introduce you as the addiction therapist. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you're hilarious. You would have people rolling in the aisles. <laughs> I said, well, I appreciate your offer, but you know, I, I'm not able to accept that, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, Alan, how did you get through all of that? I focused on what I could do. Mm -hmm. I did my best not to overly focus on all the terrible scenarios that I could create in my mind. Right. I gave myself credit for something even, so, and I mean this literally now. Yeah. I gave myself credit for literally crawling up a full flight of stairs, wrapping my foot in a plastic bag yep. so I could take a shower while I stood on one leg. Oh, my God. I gave myself credit. I didn't say, oh, poor me. You know, look at this. Oh, you know, why does this have to happen to me? I said, wow, look what I did. I yeah. did. And then, and then going down the stairs, you know, I went down on my fanning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I gave myself credit. And I gave myself credit. And I rested. That's another thing I did to get through it. I didn't overly push myself. I did like 98% whatever they told me to do. The, you know, the doctors, I did whatever they told me. And I kept as best as I could, I kept looking forward. Yeah. What am I going to do now? What, how, what am I going to accomplish? Yeah. So I, I basically, the short answer to your question is I, I maintained a positive, optimistic mindset as consistently as possible. Good. I love it. Okay. So, Alan, I know that, you know, you do a lot of work and you you do some great work and uh you know because I also helped you do your book with the back to living way over there and so why don't you tell everybody what kind of work you do and how they can work with you okay well I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist licensed chemical dependency counselor and I have certification in applied clinical nutrition now I only work with people virtually and I can only work with people who live in Texas or New Jersey because I can only work with people where I'm licensed. Okay. However, I'm in the process of marketing my book and the e-learning program, which has a lot more information in it. It's an expanded version of the book. And I'm currently on Instagram. I'm marketing it on Instagram. I can answer questions that people have, right? But I, but they can't be clients on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might get your foot hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I might also lose a few licenses. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that to happen. We know yes. what kind of track record you have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you keep yourself virtual, right? So yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So if they were, if anyone wants to see the book, review it a little bit, obviously they could go on Amazon and review it. Um, yep. I have a website, it's lifemasterywithallen.com. Oh, and, and so they could get the book or and or the, and it's about recovery from addiction. It's not about treatment. Right. It's, it's about recovery from, and if I remember correctly, my, my so-called handle on Instagram, it's either allensimberg.therapy or it might be alan.simberg. I think it's alan.simberg.therapy. <laughs> I know, I should know it. I know. Well, there's my technology skills, right? At least I know I'm on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm on Instagram, but I don't even use it. So at least you're on Instagram and using it, but I don't even use it. So <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, Alan. You know, <laughs> I don't think I've laughed this much for a very, very long time. So <laughs> I'm glad. I love it. So, okay. So, Alan, do you have any final words of wisdom you'd love to share with everybody? Yes. My words of wisdom are whenever anything happens to you that is upsetting, instead of asking yourself the question, why did this happen to me? Ask yourself the question, what can I learn from this? Mm. And always do your best to maintain the most positive, optimistic attitude, because that will help to motivate you to do what you need to do to accomplish whatever you need to accomplish. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Alan. So there you go. That was another episode of the Grit, Guts, and Courage show. Uh, thank you for listening. And thank you, Alan, for being such an awesome, funny, hilarious guest. <laughs> well, thank you also, Kelly, for having me on your show. You are very, very welcome.